The actor Justin Baldoni is probably best known for his starring role in the CW hit Jane the Virgin and for directing the 2019 box office hit Five Feet Apart, which actually actually became uh, CBS Films' third most grossing film of all time. And 2020's critically praised Disney Plus feature, Clouds, now is talking about his masculinity, this is real and personal, in his new book, first book, Man Enough, Undefining My Masculinity, which is the follow-up to his TED Talk that has many millions of views. Justin, it's great having you on The Alan Handelman Show. Oh, so great to be here. So nice to meet you. You know, Justin, this is really a timely book, a great book in a lot of ways. But before we get into any details, just give us an overview. What is Man Enough? the genesis of, of this creation? Man Enough is really uh, kind of a meditation on masculinity. It's, it's me looking at my life, starting at, with me as a young boy and the messages that I've been ingesting as to what it means to be a man today, the enoughness that I've battled with throughout, you know, uh, every, from everything from, you know, the, no crying in baseball, right? To, uh, to being successful enough and tough enough and big enough and strong enough and keep a keep enough, keep a stiff upper lip, enough. yeah. Keep a stiff upper lip right? type of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Get over it. Don't ask questions. Know the answer. You know all that stuff and all these messages I've been ingesting over the course of my life and and really me looking at it and challenging it and asking where the hell did it come from and how much of this was me and how much of this was society telling me this is who I was supposed to be and uh, and then just reframing these questions and saying, hey, well, what does this mean? Is this really healthy for us? And then um, and looking at it and really kind of deducting at the end of it all that really what we need to do is undefine masculinity. We've got to make room for anybody who identifies as a man to be a man. And we've got to take the enoughness out of it. We've got to stop comparing. And we've got to recognize that who we are is already enough. It really is. Not only is it a nuisance in your life, it really can affect your life in a lot of negative ways if you dwell on stuff like that. One of the things you mentioned, one of the things that men tend to do, and kids even try to do it, is you're trying to be the guy who can handle anything. The man has it all together. Even when things go wrong, he knows just what to say. And you always try to strive to be that guy, the perfect, it's at least I felt that pressure. And that's what you were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's also, you know, that's also in messaging and movies and TV shows and, and you know, uh, uh, news articles and magazines. I mean, this is the stuff that's been culturally reinforced in us, that you got to have all the answers, right? Got to be James Bond. And, uh, and that's not healthy. No, no. And, and, and I guess the other thing that's fascinating is the process it's it just the whole idea of writing a book is daunting to begin with, but the process for going back in your life and and discovering these things, some of these things you didn't even think about until you're writing the book and you remembered some of the stuff in your book your parents didn't even know about. Talk about well, all most that. of the stuff, most well, of the stuff in my book, my parents didn't even know yeah. about. Talk about that process. Yeah, you know, look, it, the book was also very uh, therapeutic for me. And I didn't know how to write this book. I, I, didn't, I tried to get out of it a few times. It was really, it was wildly uncomfortable to write this book and to go deep and to, and to examine this stuff. And I, I realized that I had to use anecdotes and stories from my own life as an invitation because that's the thing about masculinity, good and bad. We learn from each other. And vulnerability, when modeled, gives other men permission to be vulnerable and gives other men permission to explore, right? Mm -hmm. And um, in many ways, look, we can kind of we can kind of be sheep, right? Suddenly, LeBron James started wearing only pink. Suddenly, pink would be cool, you know. And that's mm -hmm. how this stuff works. Um, and uh, and and so, yeah, I, I started writing the book, and I started a lot of stuff started coming up, and I started thinking about even back to like my first sexual experiences, and you know, things that happened when I was when I was really young, and stuff that I never felt comfortable talking to my parents about, right. also because of the awkwardness, you know, that they struggle with in terms of how they parented me, how my dad parented me, what's comfortable, what's not comfortable, what's socially acceptable to talk to kids about and what's not. And uh, a lot of that stuff came out and it's, it's created some really rich and interesting conversations. And I really hope that this book 
can create those same conversations for the readers and for the men who, who pick it up and for the women who pick it up and uh, read it to understand some men. We're talking to Justin Baldoni. His first book is out now, Man Enough, Undefining My Masculinity. Yeah, very challenging uh, to write the book. Talk a little bit about, um, and I know a lot of interviews and people are asking you about this because there's kind of a conflict. You had to reckon with the fact that in a way, you were you were a sex symbol in, in a lot of ways on the on the TV and the movies. Uh, you had that special look, but a lot of that was the way you thought you had to be. That's the way Hollywood works. So it's something you have to reckon with. A little bit of a disconnect, even though it's not a disconnect. You're consciously aware of it, but it's something you've got to deal with. Yeah. Well, what's most interesting about it, I think that is you know I I didn't grow up really. Uh, I wasn't really handsome. I wasn't really the guy that, you know, stopped people in their tracks and they're like, oh my God, he's so handsome. I was kind of an ugly duckling. And, you know, all my friends were girls and, you know, I never, uh, I never had dates to the dances, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. I was, it was really more of a personality thing for me when girls were interested in me. And, you know, growing up and then kind of, uh, I guess, growing into myself and, in Hollywood being kind of seen as traditionally attractive, you start to take on these roles and play these characters that I had never been in my real life. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how to play them because I was insecure. You know, I'm insecure trying to figure out how to be secure. You know, maybe that's why I wasn't that good of an actor when I was younger. Uh, but all that to say, you know, I've, I've put on these roles. I've, I've played all these roles. Uh, I've been the, you know, the heartthrob on Jane the Virgin and taking my shirt off all the time. But underneath it all, I was still insecure. I was still that 16-year-old skinny kid with big eyebrows and a big nose that grew too fast (laughs) before the rest of his body. He didn't have any shoulder muscles and didn't fill out his shirts. And deep down I was insecure. And now with the advent of technology, knowing that, you know, they're going to be gifs made of me and shirtless pictures everywhere. I, you know, obsessed over the way my body looked and I found myself perpetuating a problem that I was suffering from because the way that I looked on camera also was going to influence that 16 year old kid who's watching that show, whose girl thinks that that's what a man should look like. Yeah. And that's and, what, uh, and it's a very interesting place. And I just want, you know, it's really what it is. It's just starting a conversation about it. You know, I just want to have conversations about these things because women have been suffering with unrealistic expectations of their bodies and sexualized forever. Men have been doing that to women forever. But what we don't realize as men is that we're also doing it to ourselves. And this book is also for 16 year olds, people growing up, for everybody, but it deals with this. Some of the, and all the things in your life, talk a little bit about bullying, uh, some of the things that you went through, some things that were hard to deal with when you were writing it for the book. Yeah. I mean, like I was bullied as a kid. I was picked on a lot. Um, I was made fun of. I was, you know, I had people talk and gossip about me behind my back and you know, it's what a lot of kids deal with. I can't, I can't even imagine growing up in a social media landscape where, you know, these things happen publicly. Um, so I have so much compassion for teenagers today. You know, but what I think about bullying, I think about kind of what masculinity is. And at one point in, in the book, I talk about how, you know, I was, uh, you know, on the soccer team, I was the kid who was tied to a goalpost. But then later on, I would be the, the kid who tied another kid to the goalpost. And that's masculinity, mm-hmm. right? That's the patriarchy. That's us mm-hmm. using power over somebody else to make ourselves feel better and bigger and stronger, right? To ascend and climb that ladder. And when we're bullied, well, we then go to bullying because there's always going to be somebody smaller than us. And if there isn't somebody smaller than us, where do we go? Well, we do it to women. Mm -hmm. And that's, and we're all, because it's a power game. That's how the patriarchy works. We become power hungry. It's a power dynamic. You know, and that's why I just think it's so important that we start to look at these things and recognize these behaviors. Yeah, it's very interesting. When you bully someone, you probably felt guilty right after you did it too. You just like, oh wow, why did I do that? Right? I, you know, walking home from yeah, school. Yeah, like a mo- there's like a moment. There's yeah. like a moment where you feel amazing, and then and then you realize what you did was terrible. Yeah, but we're but we've slowly but we've slowly taught ourselves as men to cut ourselves off from those feelings because when we feel terrible about the way we treat somebody else, that is called empathy. And we're not allowed to have empathy as men. That's a great point. We have to drown that out and numb ourselves to the empathetic parts of ourselves. Empathy is something that women have. Women are allowed to have that, but not men. 
If men had empathy, we wouldn't engage in a fraction of the behavior that we engage in on a daily basis. Yeah. I'm thinking, your book reminds me, and just listening to you talk, I'm thinking back in junior high school, I was bullied, and it was like, oh my God, you talk about not tell your parents, you just kind of go home and shut it off and just keep it inside, and and uh, hopefully it goes away after a while, which it did, but it's an awful time. Uh, masculinity, by the way, the book is called Man Enough, Undefining My Masculinity. The great Justin Baldini is with us. Baldini, I should pronounce it correctly. And, Baldoni, Baldoni, no worries. <laughs> yeah, Baldoni. And, and, and you know, I got to say, this is uh, very timely, but at the same time, you probably had no idea. When you did the TED Talk, that's probably when you were shocked at the reaction. I mean, just having 8 million views and yeah. Talk about what led up to uh, taking the plunge on that. Well, the Ted talk, I tried to get out of the Ted talk multiple times as well. Did I you? didn't know if there was really a, I didn't know if there was really a place for me. Why well, you know, I was an actor and an entrepreneur. What, what the hell am I going to talk yeah. about? Why does Ted want me to give a speech? You know, I'm not an expert in something. And, um, you know, and, you know, Ted reminded me that it's about ideas worth sharing. And, you know, they asked me to speak to Ted Women, and I thought, like, well, that's terrifying. <laughs> a man speaking at Ted Women uh, conference uh, around female empowerment? Like, what do I have to say? And I battled with doing it and my enoughness of doing it. And the reaction was really interesting. It was heartbreaking and affirming both at the same time because women were so happy to hear somebody basically having a very intro uh into this conversation, you know, a very basic conversation. But the things I shared about in the TED Talk were not revolutionary. It was very, just a, it was a guy just challenging the system and talking about these things. But that's how low the bar is. But afterwards, what I found interesting was that it got shared so many times. I mean, just on Facebook alone, there was a two-minute segment that got 50 million views. But the problem was is that women were resharing and praising it, and men were resharing and bashing it. Wow. Because, but the men were not watching it. The men were not watching it. The women were. And the men that did watch it were all messaging me privately saying how much it meant to them and that they finally felt seen. But the men that were bashing it were not watching it. And uh, that's and interesting. I thought that was so interesting that, that men were privately messaging me watching it, but publicly bashing it. And I'm like, all right, we got a bigger problem here. I've been pretending to be a man that I'm not my entire life. I've been pretending to be strong when I felt weak, confident when I felt insecure, and tough when really I was hurting. I think for the most part, I've just been kind of putting on a show. But I'm tired of performing. And I can tell you right now that it is exhausting trying to be man enough for everyone all the time. So the work continued, and eventually it led to this book. Wow, 50 million views. You say, you say most of those were women, you think? No, I think, well, again, there was a Facebook two-minute, you know, clip of the TED Talk. Yeah. I don't know. I, I tried to not look too deeply into all of it because I'm also a sensitive guy. And, like, you know, when, you know, when I'm misinterpreted or misheard or uh, misunderstood, it's, it's still hurtful to me. And so when these guys were saying these terrible things, I just have to, I have to tune that out. Uh, you do. I can't pay too much attention to it. And that's, yeah. but you're I, right. did, I do share I do share one story. I do share one story in the book where I did talk to one guy after the TED Talk, and he actually then watched the TED Talk and then wrote me and apologized and then publicly apologized to his followers for judging it and asking his followers to then watch it, his friends. Uh, and again, again, that's just the way we work as men. we got to be invited into the conversation to have our opinions changed, not called out. Yeah, that's very interesting. You know, one more thing. This is a great book, and I could go on and on and on. But in this uh, sea of... Uh, insecurity that many men feel. How do you project confidence? Should you project confidence? Where does confidence come from when you think back to the anxiety in your life or the, the whatever you're insecure about? Yeah, it's tricky. You know, we we're not going to change the system overnight. There's also a lot of behavior that that could be considered primal. Who knows? Um, but what I can tell you is that feigning confidence doesn't work for everybody. And I believe it does more harm than good. Um, you know, you have people pretending to be good at something when they're really not. <laughs> and, uh, and that's a terrible thing. I think that it's important to be 
brave enough. You want to talk about bravery? I think it takes bravery to ask for help. I think it takes bravery to admit that you don't know the answer. And I think that you can be confident in not knowing the answer and still be considered a good leader. How do you know everything? You can't know everything. There's something new you can learn every three seconds. There's books that come out every day that I wish I had time to read, but instead I'm promoting my own book. And I think it's important to say, oh, my God, I haven't read that yet, or oh, I haven't heard of that person yet. And, of course, somebody can be like, what, are you living under a rock? Are you stupid? Really? That's on them. Mm-hmm. That's them exercising their power over you to try to make themselves feel better. And a competent person knows he or she is enough. And that you don't got to try to be anybody else to fit in or to be enough. And that you don't have to pretend that you know something. You don't. There's power in not knowing. Oh, I like that. That's a great way to end. It, there's power in not knowing. And, Justin, you do it a lot of good with this book. Justin Baldoni. Uh, God, God willing. Oh, man, it is. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's helping a lot of people. Man Enough, Undefining My Masculinity, the new book from Justin Baldoni. It was great having you on the Alan Handelman Show, man. Thank you.